We now come to one of the weirder properties that a topological space can have, um, which is the notion of house toughness. And you will not have come across this in a course on metric spaces because all metric spaces are house tough. We never need to worry about something failing to be house tough. So let me tell you what it means first. So a topological space X is Hausdorff if for all X and Y in X such that X is not equal to Y there exist open sets U and V in X such that X is in U Y is in V and U and V don't intersect. So let's just check um, what I just claimed that any metric space is Hausdorff. because I have two points that are not equal and the distance between them is non-zero by one of the axioms of a metric space. So uh, let, uh, let's call the points x and y, let uh, d be the distance between x and y. Um, and then if I take a ball of radius half d around x, and half d around y. Um, they're disjoint. These are open balls. And um, why why is that? Well, if um, z is in the ball of radius a half d around x. I want to show it's not in the ball of radius a half d around y. So then the distance from z to y plus the distance from x to z is greater than or equal to, by the triangle inequality, the distance from x to y, which is d, and the distance from x to z is less than um, d over 2, so this whole expression is less than d z y plus d over 2. So if I just subtract off the d over 2, I get that the distance from z to y is bigger than or equal to d over 2, so z cannot lie in the ball, the open ball, of radius d over 2 around y. Okay, so these balls are disjoint. So any two ball, any two uh, points can be separated by balls in a metric space. That's to say the metric space is Hausdorff. Now, we haven't really seen enough constructions of topological spaces to construct an example which is not Hausdorff yet. We will see such examples when we cover the quotient topology, and there are many, many examples. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is to give you a bunch of properties that Hausdorff spaces have, because in real life, uh, usually, we only care about Hausdorff spaces. In this course, at least, we only care about Hausdorff spaces. So let's see what nice things there are to say about Hausdorff spaces. So first, if um, X is Hausdorff, so Hausdorff topological space, and Xn is a sequence of points in X, 
such that xn converges to x and xn converges to y for some points x and y, then x equals y. So there's a unique limit of a sequence in a Hausdorff space, which is good, right? Otherwise, how do we do anything? Well, I haven't actually told you what convergence of sequences means in topological spaces, so that's the first thing I should really do. So what does it mean for xn to converge to x? It means that um, for any open set, u containing x, um, you know, you should think of this as like a sequence of, you could take a sequence of smaller and smaller balls if this was a metric space. Um, then the tail of this sequence lives in U. So there exists an N such that Xn is in U for all N bigger than or equal to capital N. That's what convergence means. If you translate this into the metric topology in this U as a sequence of open balls of smaller and smaller radius, this gives you the usual notion of convergence in metric spaces. So let's proceed. Um, let's suppose that I do have two limits which are not equal to one another, x and y. Then by the Hausdorff assumption, I can find an open set around x and an open set around y such that they're disjoint. Now my sequence comes along and it goes, hmm, which way should I go? Well, we know it has to end up in, in U eventually because Xn converges to X. Uh, but then it also has to end up in V eventually uh, because it has to end up in V because it converges to Y. Uh, but it also has to end up in U and actually it has to end up in V. So it just keeps running from side to side and getting confused. Uh, more formally, uh, because xn converges to x, there exists an n such that xn is in u for all n bigger or equal to n. And because u is disjoint from v, that means xn does not converge to y. This is the kind of property we want our spaces to have, which is why we'll usually be working with Hausdorff spaces. Um, so let me prove another nice, useful lemma about Hausdorff spaces, which is that a compact subset K of a Hausdorff space X is closed. So what do we have to prove? We need to show that the complement is open. That's what it means for k to be a closed set. So um, let's suppose this is x, this is k. Let's pick a point y that's not in k. Right? If, if there is no such point, if x equals k, then the complement is empty, so it's open, so we don't need to worry. For each point x in k, the Hausdorffness assumption gives us open sets, uh, maybe call it U 
Well, let, let me do a different color. Um, UX around X and VY. Actually, I'll call it VX because it depends on X and Y. Uh, around y such that ux and vx are disjoint so each x in k gives by the Hausdorffness assumption ux containing x and a vx containing y such that they're disjoint And this, this gives me a bunch of sets UX and a bunch of sets VX. And what we have to do then is say, okay, as K is compact, um, we can we can cover K with finitely many of these U UXs. So there exists a finite set of XIs. In K, uh, such that K is the union of the corresponding UXIs just like in this picture, just a finite number of red sets and a finite number of corresponding blue sets. And then, um, then the finite intersection of the corresponding VXI is open. And notice that's because we're taking finitely many guys, you know, finitely many um, sets that we're intersecting and that finiteness is coming from the compactness earlier on so this is an example where this compactness thing is really useful so this intersection of vxi's is open and it's disjoint from k so these blue sets although i've actually drawn them disjoint from k they don't need to be they could go through K as long as they don't intersect the corresponding red subset. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do, do one in green. Right, so maybe this one is UX and maybe this one is the corresponding VX. Okay, so VX is allowed to go into K as long as it doesn't hit UX. But if we take the intersection of all these VXIs, because the UXIs cover the whole of K, this intersection has to be disjoint from at least one of those UXIs, so this intersection has to be disjoint from K. So that implies K is closed, because every point Y in the complement of K is contained in one of these intersections. It's disjoint from K. Taking the union of all those open sets gives the complement of K, which is then it has to be open. Okay, so the things you have to take away from this video are when a space is Hausdorff, what, what that means, and I guess this is really the, the key thing we're actually going to use in a later video, so that a compact subset of a Hausdorff space is closed. That's going to be a really useful fact later.